Friends, it's an extra special day for all of us here at So Well. I am super excited to present to all of you the quilt as a tutorial on the back wall. We're calling it the Synergy Remix, and I know you are ready. So let's get started. Well, well, welcome back everybody to So Well. I am your host, Rob Appel from Stitch in Heaven in Quitman, Texas, and I am so blessed to see all of you on the other side of the camera today for an awesome, awesome tutorial. I think it's one you've been asking for an awful lot when I read those comments. That's right, we're gonna dive into the Synergy Remix project here, but I wanna kind of give you a little bit of background history because I can't take any credit for this project. Well, maybe a little credit, but not too much. So as you know, I joined Stitch in Heaven fairly recently and I just love working with the team out there. And one of the major reasons, oh, and a great reason for you to be subscribed to our channel because we do a lot of kits and we now have a kit ready for this awesome project you see behind me. Now, do forgive me, but I did not pack the sewing machine applique for you. So you get all 14 beautiful fabrics to make this quilt yourself. You just don't get the applique. And in the kit, you also get the Splice Magic Book. And this is where the pattern really, really comes from. So like I said, Tiffany Hayes and Christy J. Smith are the gals who came up with this fantastic book called Splice Magic. And it's amazing. You all really have to get it. It is a super fun way to work with, as you can see, all half square triangles, but you're using a variety of sizes. And Tiffany has invented the most genius way of making three half square triangles from the same two squares, different sizes, super efficient. I love it. So as we go through some of these quilts, some of these layouts, you can see they're just beautiful, very different, very unique, um, some more traditional than others. So if you wanna make the quilt on your own using your own fabric choices, you can just get the Splice Magic Book because as you can see here with the diagram or here in the beautiful photographs, this is the original quilt called Synergy. Now Synergy used 14 different rainbow color fabrics, plus white as the background for contrast in each and every half square triangle unit. So what we've done differently here is we're only using 14 fabrics, no white as the background. So let me walk you through a little bit of that information and get you up to speed with how the color choices have been mixed and matched. Now, if you buy the kit, we have for you a new color chart that you can follow along. You're watching the video, so I will tell you, you're gonna need 24 units or 24 squares from every color of the 14 you see out here. Now, when I was picking the colors, I was thinking rainbow. So I started with the wonderful Allison Glass Basics from Andover. I just love the prints. I've been wanting to work with them for quite a while. So that was where I started. And then we chose the Ben Artix Basics Batiks that read like solids or a beautiful kind of salt dye. And um, they match perfectly. So this was where my color palette was, a rainbow with matching fabrics. But then Christy pointed out to me, Rob, if you do that, you're not gonna get the contrast you need. You won't see those half square triangles. They'll just look like squares. So we took the rainbow, like you see here, all 14 colors, but then we paired the print and the batik with contrasting colors. So here's where you see the actual color choices. Every two colors listed in the original Synergy has one in the remix. So for example, colors one and two from the original, three and four from the original, uh, five and six, seven and eight, nine and 10, 11 and 12, and 13 and 14 from the original were put together. It is a batik and a print for every combo. This is the actual unit we're making. I was just describing. It is a large half square triangle and two small half square triangles. And you can see that throughout the project behind me and this unit here, the prints are always heading in the same direction. But one of the things I love about this quilt is it's asymmetrically laid out and the directions are actually going in all four directions. And I'm gonna walk you through that over on the design wall towards the end of the video. So first of all, I just want you thinking, we're not really thinking in squares with design, we're thinking in rectangles, and I'm gonna get you there making all three of these half square triangles from these two squares. So you will, you're gonna to wanna to match up your right sides of your print to your batik. If you can find the right side, please let me know in the comments below. 
Now, in order to make this efficient, because everything is equal parts, I cut strips before I cut squares. Then I laid the color combinations together, and I did maybe six, no more than eight, please, layers of fabric, but I put them right sides together. So then after these were organized, like I said, about six layers thick, cut into squares this way, I already had my color combos with the batik and the print matching as they were supposed to do and also right sides together. So you need to get to that section there where you have your squares made up from your strips. One more step because we are making half square triangles, folks. We're gonna take a moment and we're just gonna draw one diagonal line on every square set. Okay, once they're right sides together. Take that diagonal line and introduce it to some needle and thread over here at the sewing machine. I'm watching the line run between the, I guess those are my toes, if that's a presser foot. So now I have chalk line in my toes and I'm running through there. I'm just looking at that line real easy, real smooth. And that has created actually one of the three half square triangles already, but we're gonna make the other two before we do anything else. Now, if you are a chain piece style quilter, meaning you wanna go from this square to the next, to the next, to the next, the way you chain piece for this project for efficiency is you do all your diagonals first. So once you have a stack of squares with diagonals sewn through them, then you move on to the next step, which is a quarter inch on the outside and a quarter inch on the outside. I'm gonna to try to explain this a couple different ways. One of these sides of triangles has to stay open. That is the big half square triangle. The other two sides need to be so enclosed. So all three lines are kind of on one side of the square, if that makes sense. Here, let me see if I can show you. Drop an presser foot, quarter inch seam allowance. And if you were, like I said, chain piecing, what you would do now per square is come down, drop the needle, lift the foot, and then just do the other side of each square. Once you've done both outside edges of each square, then you would move on to the next square while chain piecing, okay? I'm gonna grab myself the Martelli rotary rotating mat here, efficient Susan, some of us will call it, and it works great. You could use a standard straight ruler, but I really wanna show you how to use both the block lock uh, half square triangle template as well as the slotted trimmer tool. I've been using both, I've been talking about both a lot. The more I handle them and use them, especially for this project, I'm starting to lean toward the slotted trimmer. It seems to have uh, more options for me. For example, I can use it to also cut apart my half square triangles because it's bigger than what I've made. There is a quarter inch seam allowance, so I've just put my thread on top of this, the diagonal stitching. I'm gonna cut through here first, and I should have pointed that out really carefully. I, I got going a little too quick. When I laid that on there, I was cutting through the outside threads. I had to cut through the outside threads to make this our large half square triangle. And these two have now been opened so I can make those into our smaller half square triangles. So again, utilizing the slotted trimmer, there's a perpendicular mark, a center mark. I just find that I'm lining it up along the straight edge I just created. And then I'm finding my threads up here, cutting through that way so now I have created the large and the two small half square units from those two squares. I told you Tiffany was genius, right? Now, in order to do this, I'm gonna show you on the block lock, excuse me, on the slotted trimmer how to do the big one, and then on the small ones I'll show you the block lock. So for this, the big ones are, are four and a half, no real secret there, and I just need to take this and lay it so I can read it. There's a dotted line that says four and a half. I just put that on top of my threads. Now I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna rotate the mat and I really like to cut from within my ruler off so you just saw me kind of go backwards. Now there's a slot, probably where the thing got its name. Here I can slot and here there's a slot. And so in doing that with basically one pass, I've cut all four edges and dog-eared my half square triangle. All of that was done before the ironing process. So now I'm over the wool mat ironing surface and I'm just going to press towards the prints and all of this design work today. We don't have an opportunity to really nest, nest our seams. So which way you iron, I can't give you great information on that. So I'm just gonna tell you do all of them the same and it will help in some spots and it won't make any difference in others. Okay, so on all of these, I'm just pressing to the prints. I need to press 
any block that I want to trim with a block rock lock ruler, not easy to say, needs to be trimmed first. Okay, so now what we're going to do, oh, excuse me, I, I said trimmed. I meant to say ironed first. <laughs> Getting racing ahead here. As we go ahead and lay our template onto our half square triangle, there is a groove, an etched out groove that locks into our seam allowance. So I can slide that up. I'm looking to make sure that my corner lines up with the corner. If you had it 180 degrees incorrectly, you could see that your corner is not at the corner of the, the quilt block. So make sure it's corner to corner, just like that. And then just slide it back ever so much just to shave your outside edge. Okay, once those are shaved, then I can slide this all the way back. I can find the two and a half inch mark. And now I've got the seam locked in. Everything is really accurate. And I can now trim and I can trim and I even get a micro half square triangle. I don't think I can do anything with that, but that one's really crisp and accurate, right? Let me show you that again real fast. As I go to line up, I just find my mark corner to corner, pushing the template into the seam allowance of the fabrics, cutting, rotate, slide, find your two and a half inch mark for this particular project and trim again. I said I like the extra usage of the slotted trimmer, but I think accuracy without anything moving around, especially on the diagonal, I do really like this block lock because nothing moves and it's super awesome that way. Let's get ready to go over to the design wall. And before you're even ready to get on the design wall, I want you to just stack up all of your small triangles in color order, all of your prints facing the same direction. Do the same with your large half square triangles, everything. So it's just organized, it's just easy because there's a lot of symmetry to this project. You can kind of work in stacks, let's say, or, or, or in, in groups, let's say. Now, in order to do this, I want to point out real quick a couple of things. Let's go back to our diagram here within our Splice Magic book. Looking here, you are following, remember, a 14 different color layout. So anywhere you would see block one or two, you would just use colors one from Remix as a reminder. When I put this project together prepping for the video where I did it in the dark, my first thoughts were I would actually build from the center out on the design wall. If you're on the floor where you have unlimited space, that might be a great idea. But I was actually working on a wall to begin with. And as I was doing it, I became very challenged for space and I had to start moving blocks all around. And that became kind of challenging because remember folks, they're not actual squares, they're rectangles, and all of the units aren't put together yet. And so if you've got to rebuild and remove, I just ended up putting everything back in piles and starting, like I'm going to recommend for all of us, in rows, just following the rows and rows of the book layout here, or using the wonderful uh, cover of the kit because it has the actual quilt on it, you can follow piece by piece as you go. So let's bounce on over to the design wall where I can show you how this kind of comes together um, block by block. And, and that's really the best thing that you can do is, is just get to the design wall and go block by block following the layout in the book and your extra worksheet. Now, in the quilt itself, you can't see there's an actual extra top row up here, but I wanted, you know, framing and pretty and all that. So there's actually a red square you can't see up here, but I'm gonna follow this row down right here on the design wall. So you have to know there's an extra red square up there, which is this extra square right here. That extra square right here is number 13B down in this bottom corner if you're following along with the book. And again, I'm gonna go in the short rows versus the long rows, or maybe I should call those the columns. At any rate, there's two things structurally that are really important. Once you see this, it actually makes it very simple and rhythmic to put your design together. Remember, all of our units are loose. We're going to start by using a large and two small half square triangles from the same color family. In each block, in each unit, the prints are facing the same direction. Here's your rectangle. 
print, print, straight line, straight line, print. Okay, so they're facing the same direction. That's a rule. You can do that in every block. Now, coming down, working along the bottom of the book, the next one was the blue-purple combo. What I want you to see here is, I started with the red and blue with a big square. Now I've got the two small squares and then the big. Coming down, a big and the two small squares. Then the two smalls and a big. So in the rows, the actual units flip, flop, big, small, big, small, but all of the prints are still heading, as you can see, in the same direction. Let's look at the quilt now that you kind of start to understand that. Here's like if you're thinking of music or a, a pebble in a pool, this is the turnaround. This is the part where everything kind of starts or returns, okay? So right now, what I was just describing was like big, uh, oh, you're out of frame there. there. There's a big, there's the smalls, there's the big, there's the smalls, and it coming down this way. That's the rotation. But once we get to this middle section, and this goes all the way to the borders in all four sides, it mirrors. So that's what you're seeing right here. So if I was going big to smalls, now I've got my big, here's the turnaround. Now it's big, exact same orientation as the one above, or I should say mirrored orientation as the one above, and it forms like this arrow. And then we get back into our alternating big, small, big, small, big, small, big, small, as you can see. So in the one direction, the units are just big, small, big, small, flip-flopping. And in the other direction, coming this way until you get to each turn around, the units themselves are actually all traveling in the same direction. So here's my big, my smalls, my big, my smalls, my prints are point down, my prints are point down. So everything in this row until it gets to the turnaround is gonna be traveling the same direction. And then it mirrors and goes the opposite direction as you can see here. So now, I just said it, now you can really find it in the quilt. You can see this row until they were all in the same direction. The column here, I guess I'm calling it now that it's on the wall, big, small, big, small. And that's all you have to know to put it together. While working on the design wall is, like I said, because of rectangles, I found this was really the easiest way to put it all together. I overlapped the quarter inch on my small triangles so that they match up to my big half square triangle. But I can get all three of these units off the wall without touching anything around it. We need to sew our smalls before we sew our bigs. So my process is this. I come over to the wall, I find the one I want, I literally fold it over on itself, I pinch that seam, and I walk with that seam right over to my sewing machine, and I drop that quarter inch seam allowance, and I make that quarter inch seam allowance, and then I press that quarter inch seam allowance, right? Now for these, again, there's no real specific direction to press. So just any direction. But the reason I do my smalls first is so that I can bring them back in. Oh, oh, make sure that they are the proper orientation. While they're in the proper orientation, then I fold it over, matching up that seam. And again, I just rotate, I kind of walk to the machine, making sure that I can keep my location. Now, when it comes to pressing the two smalls and the big, because of the nature of the fabric, it's gonna be easier to press that seam into the bigger half square triangle. And then this unit's gonna go right back on the wall right where it belongs, in its proper orientation, and then I'm gonna move on to the next two small units, and then I'm gonna marry them to the big unit, and then I'm gonna move on, and I'm gonna build all of my rows that I can, because for a lot of us, that's about what our design walls can handle. I really recommend getting all of your rows done. It's very easy to stay and keep track. Once the rows are done, you can just match up the turnaround throughout the project and, and um, I wasn't saying install or insert those rows, but what I really wanted to also share with you is it's at that point when you're pressing 
the seam allowances between the squares, maybe in the first row you want to press all the seams down, and in the next row you want to press them all up. So at least you can nest those seam allowances and keep everything piecing together very accurately. Like I said, it's a very, very efficient project. It's super fun to do. I loved working on it. You just need to be a little organized, and the more time you spend creating and trimming your half square triangles, the more accurate any quilt using half square triangles would really turn out, right? Now at the end of the project, if you saw the long video where I was quilting in the dark overnight where I broke into stitch in heaven, I had the blessing of throwing this on the long arm, the Q20, the big stand up by Bernina. I never used the machine before and it was awesome, but I didn't want it to look real linear. I wanted the machine quilting in this just to have a nice, soft, organic, kind of a paisley, kind of a bubbly feel, because usually when I have hard, crisp lines in my patchwork, I like a soft, smooth quilting to kind of throw in a juxtaposition and a fancy word all at the same time. So I just basically used a blue thread. Um, it was kind of a neutral to the project itself. And I did free motion this on a long arm, but I could have done it on the domestic. In the long arm, because it wasn't in a pantograph, what I did is I kind of free motioned and kind of doodled, and I left bigger gaps and spaces. So I wasn't doing a full rotation on the long arm from a full row at a time so that you don't see rows and rows of doodle stitching. It's the easiest way to keep it organic is, is these half movements back and forth. Um, but it was really fun to, to, to get out there and do it. You could do a project like this still uh, with your free motion quilting, or I was gonna say very basic stitch in the ditch or echo quilting. It doesn't take much and boy the size of those squares and rectangles if you just did the stitch in the ditch it would be perfectly quilted and last forever for you. So I'm, I'm really excited to get to share this with you. Some of you saw the live demonstration I did. Uh, I just only had one camera angle and I wasn't really able to bring it all together and like I said now the kits are available and so do make sure that you are subscribed. Make sure you're grabbing yourself a kit. Um, I think I told you but make but I want you to know the book does come with the kit. So if you're getting the kit, you don't need to get the book. Also, if you want to do it on your own, grab yourself a Splice Magic book. Thank you again, Tiffany and Christy. This is an amazing technique, ladies. I'm so blessed to get to play with this and uh, share with everybody the quilts that are in the book and this new Synergy remix. So anyways, everyone, super glad to see you all. We will be back very soon with another tutorial. Stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.